as toy collectors, we're often out hunting for the latest releases at retail. And I often get asked, is there a code? Is there a way to understand how often figures are going to be put out? And, well, actually there kind of is. And there's also a reason why empty pegs are seen at retail all the time and its relationship to when new figures are going to be put out. So let's dive into that. I'm Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I've been in the toy industry for about 25 years. As well as a toy maker, I'm a toy collector. And uh, I'm used to dealing with these things. These are called master cartons. And master cartons and the way they're designed and how many figures they're going to hold is a mathematical formula. So let's dive into this and look at how this relates to peg efficiency and how many units are on shelf, as well as when replenishment is going to happen. It's not exactly a magic formula, but there is some predictability that can be unlocked by understanding the code and understanding how master cartons, individual SKUs, and pegs relate. So first off, the big thing is to understand the one unit per week rule. Most major retailers have a rule that every peg in the store has to sell one unit per week. Now, you could sell multiple units on a peg per week, of course, but as long as the pegs are doing this, that's considered a good peg, if you will. That peg meets all expectations, and it's not in, I guess, uh, in, in the scope to be removed or have the item replaced, as long as it's generating one unit per peg per week, and you have a good peg. Now, a lot of the way replenishment works and the way case packs work have to do what's called the case and a half rule, meaning one and a half. So let's dive into this a little bit deeper. What is a case and a half rule? Essentially, it means that a retailer is going to get two cases delivered to them. With these two cases, one full case will be put out on the pegs, and a half of a second case will be put on the pegs. The pegs should be designed, or rather the item should be designed, to work with this rule. The second half of the second case is put in the back. Now, how the way, how the way, how this trickles down to individual SKUs and case packs is that the packaging needs to be designed in order to accommodate this rule. And not just the packaging of the individual figures, but what's more important is that the number of units of individual figures that are put inside a master carton has to reflect this rule. So when a retailer receives a master carton of toys, meaning a full unopened box, inside there have to be enough units so that with two cases, the pegs it's going to fill will fill one and a half times of a case, basically a full case and a half of a second case. So if you have an assortment, let's say, of six figures, not counting the uh, Build-A-Figure down there at the bottom, that doesn't count as a figure, so you're going to need to put the number of units in a master carton so that you could fill this case and a half rule. And that is why some characters are doubled up. The reason is, is because in order for this SKU, Marvel Legends, to complete the case and a half rule, then eight units are needed per master carton, which means one figure gets doubled up, in this case, Wolverine, because, as we all know, kids love Wolverine. Well, they do. He's the most popular character and most recognizable, and that's the character that's going to get doubled up, always the one that's most kid-friendly. So here's an example I snapped the other day when I saw this case pack at retail. I actually should have done a better job because behind that Wolverine is a second Cyclops, so you're seeing two Cyclops and two Wolverine on the pegs right here. So extrapolating that, since we know that there's only one Cyclops in a case pack, if there's two Cyclops on the pegs, that means that this store has gotten two cases, and that make or at least at least two cases. And that uh, also reflects because they have two pegs allocated for this SKU, not just one. So if they have two pegs and they have two case packs that have been delivered, we can see from what's left over on the shelf to, you know, figure that out. So let's jump in and do the math and see if we can extrapolate how long it's going to be until a replenishment comes along. And it's not that complicated, but we'll try to go through it and we'll make it fun. All right, so you've got 
eight figures in a master carton, right? And it doesn't matter that two of them are Wolverine. The store doesn't care about that. The store just wants to see these figures sell. So if you get two case packs, because you have two pegs, now we're talking about 16 units. But the pegs are not meant to hold 16 units. 16 wouldn't fit. The reason being is that case in a pack rule, case in a half rule, the pegs will fit six units each. So if you have two different pegs allocated for one skew, that means if you have six per peg, you're going to be able to have 12 figures out at one time. Six on one peg, six on the other. That's the case in the half rule. So that second half of each case is now put in the back room for replenishment for when these are sold down. So doing simple math, if you have 8 and 8, 16, minus 12 on the peg, well, that's going to give you four units in the back, which makes sense. And these units will stay there, ideally, for a few weeks until replenishment is needed and the figures sell down. If four units are needed before that, obviously they can be retrieved, but it's likely they're going to sit in the back for a few weeks. Now, what if someone comes along, though, and buys every figure on the peg all at once, meaning a new case pack is put out, you've got six figures per peg, and they buy, let's say, all 12, or as we saw in that example, they, uh, all there were eight figures that were bought on the pegs that I showed. And a uh, special thank you to DKZ137 for sending me this image over on Twitter. I always appreciate getting good retail images to use in the videos that will uh, make sense. All right, so obviously the figures in the back could be put out the next day if the pegs are cleared out by one person. But to a retailer, that doesn't necessitate a fire, if you will, to quickly put out these four SKUs that are sitting in the back. Because while well, they've sold eight units and there's four units sitting in the back, they've already hit their weekly goal. And that's the bigger issue, is to the retailer, the goal is achieved. They're only trying to sell one unit per week. So if they sell eight units to one person in one day, well, they've met eight weeks of sale goals. They've just, they, they don't, they no longer need, this peg does not, does not need to perform for eight more weeks. So, the expected delivery of replenishment is based on this rule. So if there's eight units in a case pack, the simple thing is it's going to be about eight weeks until replenishment comes. Obviously, there's no guarantee. This isn't an exact science, but it's definitely an approximation. So if you go to a retailer and you see a fresh case pack is put out and there's only a few, you know, the scraps left over, if you will, you can kind of take a break. You don't need to come back to this retailer for about eight weeks because the likelihood of them getting replenishment is very low. They're going to wait because they've already met their eight-week goal. Whether they met their eight-week goal in eight weeks or they met their eight-week goal in one hour because one person came along, there's a very slim chance of getting a replenishment quickly because eight weeks of goal are achieved. And that case and a half rule, that unit and a half, is what maintains this. Retailers just want to meet that goal of one unit per week. So, yeah, the pegs might be empty, but that's because one person may have come along and purchased an entire case pack's worth of weeks, meaning it's eight units, they, they bought eight weeks' worth of performance. So the retailer is like, hey, great, peg is now... Uh, you know, it's done its duty now for eight weeks. We already covered that in an hour. So great, we can just, you know, hang out and wait for replenishment. And that is why the empty pegs wait. And that is hopefully a formula that can help you understand how long it will be until a case pack is replenished and when you should continue the toy hunt. Obviously, there's that half of a case pack sitting in the back that could always pop out. But again, there's no rush because they've already hit their goal not only for that week, but if a whole case pack is bought in one purchase, their goal has been met for eight weeks or six weeks or ten weeks, depending on how many units are in a case pack. So that's kind of the way it works, and that's how the case and a half pack trickles down to replenishment. And hopefully we can use this to better understand when replenishment is going to happen 
and when you can expect to toy hunt at this location again to hopefully find more of the same skew. And that's also why empty pegs happen. I hope this was informative and not too repetitive. Uh, I'm never a friend of math. If you like this and uh, want to share it with others, it always helps the channel and it tells YouTube to share it with other people. Thanks for watching.